what's up. At some point, people thought adding large chunks of grapes in a chicken salad was an innovation. Aside from that leading to a weirdly wet result that keeps me up at night texturally, it has also unfortunately changed what people think should go into a chicken salad. And we deserve better. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make three exceptionally delicious and creative variations of chicken salad, all of which don't have grapes. I mean, one of them has raisins in it, but those aren't grapes. Hey Siri, are raisins grapes? A raisin is a dried grape. <sighs> to get started, we'll need some chicken. Specifically, I've got two eight ounce breasts here, or roughly 450 grams. Breasts over thighs because the fat in chicken thighs congeals in a chilled salad, making it feel greasy in your mouth. To prep these breasts for cooking, I'm gonna give them a quick dry brine by liberally salting them on both sides. Letting the salt sit on the flesh for a little while here loosens the protein fibers in the meat, allowing the lean chicken breast to hold onto its moisture a lot better while cooking. And once they're all salted up like this, I'll let them sit for 15 to 20 minutes. And after a quick brine, you can see that the salt has penetrated the breast meat and it's gotten a little bit firmed up. Over at the stove, I've got a pot of water up to a ripping boil, but I'm not gonna be boiling this meat. Instead, I'll turn the heat down to low and let this water drop to about 180F so that I can gently poach these breasts. Poaching is basically cooking with water that's well below a boil. It's a much gentler cooking method than boiling and because of that, a lot less of the chicken's juices will be squeezed out. Now, once these breasts are in the water, I'll set a timer and poach them for about 20 minutes. Since these breasts are cold, they should lower the water temp even more to about 165, 170F. For poaching breasts, that's the sweet spot, in my opinion. 20 minutes later, my chicken is opaque and feels firm, so I'll pull it out and check the temp with my instant read thermometer. 150 to 155F is what I'm looking for here. Any higher and the breasts would start to get dried out and a little bit ropey. I'll let these cool for at least 15 minutes before I cut into them. 15 minutes later, when I cut into one, you can see what a little dry brining and a gentle poach can do for such lean meat. Oh baby, that's juicy looking and not stringy or tough at all. Now to prep this for the salad, I'll cut it in half down the center from top to bottom like this, then I'll give it a small dice. I'll mention that if you wanted to skip this entire cooking process, a great alternative here would be to use a rotisserie chicken. With rotisserie, the thigh meat is a lot less greasy because those birds are cooked really slowly and the majority of the extra fat in the thigh is rendered out. In total, these two eight ounce chicken breasts should yield me about 400 to 450 grams of cooked chicken. Now, let's make it into salad. First up is the vibrant, mildly spicy, but heavily spiced curried chicken salad. Ooh, ooh, mm. For that, into my stand mixer, I'll combine all 400-ish grams of my chicken, then 50 grams of minced shallots, 50 grams of small diced jalapenos, 10 grams of minced garlic, that's about two cloves that I grated on my microplane. Then the juice of a whole lime. That's about 25 to 30 grams worth of juice. Next, in goes 15 grams of curry powder, three grams of ground cumin, and five grams of garam masala. This garam masala brings some of the warm spices that I feel are missing in curry powder. Then 30 grams of minced cilantro, 30 grams of chopped pistachios, but these pistachios are sifted as well. For that, I just chopped up the pistachios with a knife. And as you can see, there's a ton of dusty nut stuff in there. That's gonna muddy up the flavor of the salad by making the whole thing taste nutty. And to help get rid of that, I'm gonna sift it through a fine mesh strainer. Now, we'll just get a few pops of pistachio in every bite, but it won't be a pistachio flavored salad. Next, I'll add in 50 grams of pickled golden raisins and then two spoonfuls of the sweet sour pickle brine that they're sitting in. I'll link to my website below where I'll have the full recipe for these raisins. Also, I showed the full process in my big ass salad two video if you wanted to check that out. Lastly, in goes eight grams of salt and then 200 grams of nice tasting mayo. Lately, I've been really happy with store-bought Duke's Mayo. It's got clean flavor and doesn't have a weird mouth-coating texture like the other major brands do. And Lauren likes Duke's as well. Get it all. Close. Taste it. It's good. Now to mix this, I'll throw on the paddle attachment and mix it on high speed or speed four on this KitchenAid for about 30 seconds or so. I prefer to use the stand mixer here over just my hands and a bowl so that I can shred this chicken down. One of my main beefs with standard issue chicken salad is that it's just cubed meat with mayo sitting on it. That's not very well integrated. When you break down the chicken further, you're getting more of it covered with that flavorful mayo and you're unifying all of the textures. And after 30 to 45 seconds of whipping this up, I've got some nicely shredded chicken. There's still smaller cubes in there for sure, but they're suspended in a sea of shreddy meat and flavorful dressing. This is gonna be a much more enjoyable experience and it's Ooh. gonna be a lot less wet. Ooh. 
Mm. Flavor-wise, this salad is punchy. It's got jalapeno, lime, cilantro, and of course, the powerful aromas of curry and garam masala. Serve it on some hearty crackers or some hot, fresh naan, or on a toasted, squishy brioche bun. Next, let's make a Japanese-inspired chicken salad that tastes kind of like a spicy tuna sushi roll. This one's gonna start with some small diced cucumbers. In total, I need 50 grams of those. Then, I'll hit those cukes with a strong pinch of salt and then a strong pinch of sugar. This is gonna season the cukes so that they stand out and pop more in such a rich, fatty salad, but it also draws out a lot of their moisture. After 15 minutes of curing, I'll come back and drain off that liquid. As you can see, just 50 grams of cucumbers gave off like three tablespoons of juice. That would make the salad mucho soggy. Definitely get rid of that. Now into the mixer goes my cucumbers, then another 400-ish grams of chopped poached chicken, then 175 grams of kewpie mayo. Of course, regular mayo would also work, but if you can get it, the Japanese kewpie is really rich and creamy and makes this salad really special. A few weeks ago, I showed you guys how to make your own kewpie style mayo at home in my takoyako video, taco yaki video, and I'll link to that one down in the description if you wanna make your own. Behind the mayo, I'll add in 30 grams of chopped scallions, then 40 grams of chopped sushi ginger. Before you chop the ginger, it's very important to squeeze it dry. Just like for the cucumbers, if these bring all the liquid that they have inside of them along for the ride, then we'll have a soupy, wet chicken salad. No one wants that. Next, in goes 30 grams of white miso, five grams of soy sauce, and 20 grams of furikake. Furikake is what the Japanese call rice seasoning. It's basically seaweed weed, fish flakes, sesame seeds, other good tasting stuff. And it's really flavorful and makes a great pantry addition. I'll link to this stuff on Amazon if you don't have access to an international grocery store by your house. Next in goes 30 grams of sriracha, 10 grams of sugar, 10 grams of rice vinegar, and then a few splashes of nice sesame oil. A little bit goes a very long way. Now I'll just give this another 30 to 45 seconds with the paddle attachment on high speed, just like for the curried chicken salad. And if you don't have a stand mixer, I'd say chop the chicken down by hand and a lot more before adding the ingredients and then work to crumble it down in the bowl. This should approximate the paddle. And there we go, a whipped up chicken salad. It's broken down, but not pasty or mealy. There's still nice chunks of chicken in there. Flavor wise, this salad has all of the fun Japanese flavors in one place. It's got umami from the furikake, miso and soy. It's got a little spice. It's got a little fresh from the cukes and it's just a little bit sweet. When paired up with a squishy bun like this one, it definitely reminds me of something that you could buy at 7-Eleven in Tokyo. It's full on in terms of flavor and it's kind of like junk food in the best way possible. To wash it down, I'm gonna grab a little sip of sake from the sponsor of today's video, Tipsy, the largest online sake store in the US. If you've been watching this channel, then you probably know that Lauren and I just took a trip to Japan where we had a lot of great bites of food and almost everywhere we went served great sake. We had it with tonkatsu, yakitori, sushi, everything basically, because sake is a really food friendly beverage. Tipsy's sommelier recommended that I pair this recipe with Watari Bune's Junmai Ginjo 55 which to me is similar tasting to a young white wine with just a little bit of bubbly effervescence and a subtle acidity. It pairs really well with the fresh cucumber and cuts through that super creamy kewpie mayo. If you have a specific dish that you'd like a pairing for, or if you just want to explore more, Tipsy Sake Club would be a great place to start. You just take their quiz and their sake sommelier, Sachiko, matches you with a bottle that fits your palate. You just tell her what you like, what your price point is, the number of bottles you want, and how often you want it delivered. So to try some delicious sake, use my link and and promo code BRIAN2023 to get 10% off your Tipsy order. The link is in my description. That's 10% off. Thank you, Tipsy. Up next is an herby pesto flavored chicken salad. For that, into my food processor, I'll combine 50 grams of basil, 30 grams of parsley, 20 grams of cilantro, and then the juice of a medium lemon. For me, that's about 35 grams worth. Behind that, I'll add in 200 grams of nice tasting mayo. Now the lid goes on and I'll spin this until the herbs are well broken down. That'll take about a minute or so. And there we go. This food processor won't get things 100% smooth, but it's more than good enough. That's pretty far broken down. So from here, I'm gonna move this herby mayo into the bowl of my stand mixer and then add in most of, but not all of my chicken. Out of the 400-ish grams, I'm setting aside about 100. Next, in goes 30 grams of grated Parmesan cheese, two to three grams of chili flake, four grams of salt, 50 grams of minced shallots, then two garlic cloves that I hit on my microplane or just mince up with a garlic press. Next, I'll add in 50 grams of toasted pine nuts. To toast these, I just hit them in a medium low heat nonstick pan for about five minutes, stirring them pretty often. Now, once everything's in the pool, I'll paddle this mixture until things are well combined and the chicken is shredded down. 
that looks pretty good, but it's not finished. Remember that other chicken? At this point, I'm gonna add it in and then slowly paddle things together for 20 to 30 seconds. This is gonna give me a chicken salad that has more of that chicken chunk texture. It's not gonna be wet like traditional chicken salad because those chunks that I just added are sitting in a well-whipped mixture of dressed shredded meat. Also, if you like this meatier, chunkier texture, this method would work great for all three of these salads. The flavor of this herby pesto salad is quite creamy and rich. Woo. That touch of salty parm helps hold things together and gives the salad a soft, round, cheesy backbone. Of course, it really does taste like pesto too. It's mucho basil forward and that herbal sweetness balances out the tart lemon. I hope I've convinced you that chicken salad doesn't have to be boring and can be so much more than just cubed up chicken with walnuts, grapes, and mayonnaise. How do these chicken salads stack up to the ones that you're used to? Are they lame? Are they good? Let me know down in the comments. I really hope you try at least one of these three. Let's eat this thing. <laughs>